Good afternoon. I am starting my next van project. This one is have quite a bit of complexity to it. I guess technically each one of them does in its own right, but this one's going to have a quite a bit of complexity to it because uh, it's a multitasker. As a matter of fact, it's really a continuation of my garage project that I was doing. If you guys remember uh, this building, it the idea was that it obviously is going to house my bikes. I've taken those out because I need to get to um, do the water that's inside, but it's going to house my bikes. It's going to house my fresh gallon, fresh 40 gallon water tank. It's going to house my hot water heater. And uh, then I'm going to have my sink up Hello. here. Hello. In, in, in any case, the, the, kind of goal of this is the ultimate multitasker. This is a theme or a strategy I've been doing throughout my entire van build Russell, project. It's me. And the, uh, the goal is, you know, with a van being so small, if you only have something do one thing, then it better be really, really good at that one thing uh, and be impossible to sort of replicate other ways because you don't have enough space in here to have everything just do one thing. So wherever possible, you hey, need to Russell. focus on uh, on trying to have multiple benefits to something. And it's extra important inside a very small space. So my goal for this is to have kind of a multitasker with my countertops. Uh, I'm gonna put my wood on my walls as well, and I'm gonna do the, the table or countertop. Who is that? It's Russell. Russell who? From the future. From the future? I don't have much time. It's hard to talk from the future. Let me show our audience what you're you trying to do. So you think this would be better actually showing this as a finished product than starting from the beginning and kind of choreographing everything? Yes, no question in my mind. All right, I'm always willing to do something new. Great. Give me a second to do the magic snap. Sure. Thanks, Russell. Hello, coming to you from the future. I thought instead of doing what I normally do, which is explain the project and then go through each step and sort of build up and then have a finished product at the end, I thought you would enjoy seeing the finished product right from the start. And I'll make sure I still pass this back to myself in the past so that I can go through and kind of explain the steps, at least quickly. But in the meantime, before I begin, I will just say that this project is not for the faint of heart in terms of it took, or at least for me, it took me way longer than I expected, like over 80 hours to do this countertop uh, portion of it. And there's a really good reason for that. It, part of it is that this is a somewhat complex countertop, but uh, the bigger reason is that I have had uh, the opportunity or been lucky enough to have a, a great mentor when it comes to the wood portion of this. And uh, you've seen me work at Al, my friend Al's workshop. So we did the same thing with this, but at every step of the way, instead of just sort of plowing through it and, and doing it, he stopped and took the time with me to teach me the, the equipment we were using, like the kind of the history of it, like what it's for and, and how it came about, and also explain, you know, the techniques for using it versus just, oh, put it through and it'll be fine. As a result, I, I came out the other end of this whole project with a vast array of skill sets that I did not have before. So not only will I be able to do additional woodworking on my own in the future, and I'm looking forward to that, but I, can help other people who maybe don't have that experience as well and, and pay it forward. So really excited about that. Uh, why don't I go through the finished product? It's not completely done. There's some elements that I still have to do, but it's uh, mostly done. Uh, you'll see, you'll notice here, I've got my, my uh, wood on the outside of the garage area. It is a shiplap wood, uh, similar to shiplap that I use for my walls and my ceilings. I find shiplap, really good because it's it's basically an interlocking pattern and with a van that moves as much as it does it 
just seems like a very smart thing to, to add to it. I also like this because I liked the uh, the contrast of the, the light and the dark of everything. It, I have a door. I, there's a handle that's going to go in it. I haven't found one that I like, so it's still to be done. In here is going to be a series of shelves. This top one is going to be for my induction cooktop that I'm going to use. I'll be able to put pots and pans in there. And then I can stick my induction cooktop on here when I'm ready to, to cook. Put it away when I'm not, keep my surface clean. This will, this isn't permanently attached, but when it is, it'll 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 pull itself down and be nice and flush. In this center section, you can pull out and underneath is the sink. I know you guys can't see right now. I mean, you can see, but it's not super uh, bright. And that's because A, uh, it's the camera's far away, but also it's raining right now. So I'll take it though, we need the rain so bad in California. It hasn't, it hasn't rained much of, at all this whole season. As a result, I'll make sure I show some pictures along the way. And this sink is just really pretty. It is a gun metal stainless steel. So it, it's, this, it's this beautiful sort of charcoal looking color. And I think it really pops and, and ties well in with the wood. This, this wood, Let's talk about that for a second. So I handpicked this for what I want, which is the great thing about making your own. The light color is teak and the, the dark color is walnut. And I wanted the dark color because I wanted to tie in with all the dark accents of things like my extruded aluminum. And I wanted the light to kind of pull in with the floor. I think it did a good job. The other element of this is because it's that's they're very hard wood, uh, like hard wood. <laughs> it allows you to use it as a cutting board. Uh, the oil I used for this to, to stain it, I guess, if you will, is just mineral oil and it, and it uses, uh, it's mineral oil and honey wax. So natural, won't hurt anything. And you can just, you can just, you know, put more on when it dries out a little bit. I have been mentioning at the beginning of the video from myself in the past, the whole concept of multitasking. This is, this is just such a perfect example of that, but I've done it throughout the whole van. And the reason is, as I had said, is you just, it's such a small space. You need to use it as, and maximize it wherever you can. Even my roof, which is the solar panels. They're not just solar panels. If you've seen that video, but it's actually a rooftop deck so I can use it to sleep on or even put a chair on and just enjoy up there. This countertop is, is no exception. Even something as simple as making this surface, you know, you pull it out and use it as a cutting board. Now it's, it's doubling, right? But back here, I, I really go to town on that whole multitasking element. Uh, this countertop is like over four feet long. So it's really long. I didn't want to make it super heavy, even though I wanted that butcher block style. So I, since I was making it, thinned it down but I did cut this down the middle. And the reason I did is because I want to be able to take this off and move it, whoops, <laughs> move it over here and use it as my kitchen table. So I don't have it done yet. I'm going to have a, a couch here. And when I do, I'm going to have a base unit that attaches to the couch and affixes to the bottom of, of this. So that multitasking, I used to have it as a counter. Now I can move it as my kitchen table and I can have, you know, friends and fam or friends and family hang out and we can eat when it's raining and we can play cards. Back here, I, let me bring this up just in case you guys can see it, is a sub counter. So when this is removed, actually, I didn't even think of this. My neighbor next door, Steve, came up with this when I was explaining the whole concept months ago. He's like, well, what are you gonna do? with the empty space, because this is, again, extruded aluminum, aluminum. So there's emptiness in between each one. He says, why don't you just put a, uh, a countertop below the countertop? And I thought it was a brilliant idea. As soon as he said it, I went, ah, oh, why didn't I think of that? But that's the value of actually talking to people about things, right? Because everybody comes up with different things. It's also the value of YouTube with so many people posting what they do. If you just watch enough videos, you are likely to, you know, to see an idea that you didn't think of yourself, but that you want to emulate. So this is an example. When I take this off as my kitchen table, I'll be able to use this and have the full counter still 
functional so I can put pots and pans or work on my bike parts or whatever it is I want to do. I also haven't uh, figured out the hardware that's going to go underneath that's going to be used to connect to the to the stand. I want to do that first, but then when I do, I'll, I'll actually cut out holes in the sub table. That'll allow the table to lock in and stop it from sliding as well, give me additional functionality. This middle section is just a smaller piece. And this one, I call it my bistro table. Again, uh, dual functionality. So it can sit here as the counter or I can take it and I wanna use this for outside is my idea. So I can use it to cook on outside. Uh, I can use it to, if I want if we're by a lake or a river, I can bring it next to the water and have a surface to eat. You know, remember I, I don't plan on going to campgrounds with this. So I need to have the functionality of doing lots of things that would be at a campground like a table myself. There's also a sub counter top here. So just like before, when this is out, I don't lose my, my work surface at all. With that, that is the last piece of it. Hope you enjoyed the tour of the completed or mostly completed product. And with that, I will uh, pass it back to Russell to go through, explain the different steps we did to make this. Back to you, Russell. Thanks, Russell. I, I actually agree. That was, uh, that was a, quite a bit better than me explaining it, kind of all the details ahead of time in each step. So because of that, I, I actually don't need to talk about what we're going to do on this project because you've just seen it. I think what I'll do instead, since uh, we've already have the finished one, is A, I'm going to let my family know that I have 80 hours of work coming up um, that was far beyond what I expected. And B, uh, why don't I just go through as I'm doing the project and film or take some pictures of each one of the steps that I do and give a little narrative on it to explain the tool and what, what the value is for building this, well, what will be <laughs> this countertop. All right, let's go. The first step is designing what you're gonna do. So get out the pen and paper and start drawing. It's really important to pencil out everything, dimensions and so on. And then you get to pick out the wood. So I went to a McBeath hardwood which is a boutique lumber yard that has all this great wood from all over the place. Really fun. Step two for us was using a planer. And the real goal of this, we wanted to get the thickness of the wood pretty close to what we wanted. A little bit thicker, but pretty close before we, we chopped it up into smaller pieces. Step three was a multi-step process. So the first thing we did was ripped all of our boards, which is essentially cutting uh, the long way a board. And in this case, we cut into approximately two inch strips. You wanna make sure you calculate it exact, um, what you need to have kind of the right pattern when you're done. And after we ripped every single piece, we actually ran it through the jointer. And the purpose of the jointer is to create a really, really flat, surface uh, that when you butt it up to another surface there's no gaps this is extra important when you're making a table like this because it's made up of a series of uh, parallel boards right that are all clamped together and uh, if you have any gaps those will show up when you when you clamp it and then finally after cutting all or ripping all the pieces and and running them through the jointer i laid them all out to get the right pattern because you want to make sure you know what it's going to look like prior to gluing it, since uh, you're not undoing that once the gluing starts. Speaking of gluing, uh, step four is gluing. And uh, you basically need to lay your clamps down. And by the way, tip, you can never have too many clamps. Uh, the clamps do multiple purposes in this. They obviously bring it all together. They'll hold, uh, get the air out from the glue and the wood. They also keep it from bowing. You put clamps on the bottom and the top, uh, and then you have to hit it with a hammer and knock everything down to get it as flush as you can. I took the strategy of having one side super, super flush and the other side 
have all the uh, the odulations or whatever it's called, and uh, it, as the glue starts to set, it gets very tacky and hard, and the wood is very very difficult to move around. So much so that I was hitting it so hard with the hammer I, and a block, I put my finger in the way and accidentally hit that and split open the end of my finger. You can see as this project progresses that I get more and more band-aids on my hands, but I guess that just means uh, I have working hands. So the next step is to run it through the planer again. And again, this helps us get the thickness down to the perfect level. In this case, you'll notice that even though it looked like I was gluing the entire thing in the previous step, I actually did, I only glued half of it. And the reason for that is that the planer can only take about 19 inches, I think, uh, 19 or 20 inches wide. So the table would be too wide to fit through here. Uh, as such, we took the strategy of just, you know, basically cutting the table in half lengthwise and getting each side the exact same thickness, which is easy with a uh, tool like this. That's beautiful. So my step six before I do any more gluing or cutting is to do a test fit. Okay, so we're just test fitting the table and or counter, and it's looking really good in here. There's about a 400 thousandth uh, overhang here, which will end up going away when we, uh, we scribe the back. So you can see my wall is uh, there's a gap here, there's no gap here, and then there's another gap here. So we're going to do what's called scribe, which is draw a line that follows this curve, and then we will sand that piece of wood so that it fits against the wall. And uh, was gonna, we were going to use a compass, but then uh, Adam here had an idea to just, which is really smart, so I ended up just making a scribe myself. I ended up getting a piece of wood and measuring the farthest point, so from here to here, which is around 300 thousandths. I drew a line on, let's see, maybe you can see it there. I drew a line on this piece of wood and then drilled a hole that was just uh, about the same size as this lead. And then I'm gonna use it and put it against here so it's perpendicular and just follow it the whole way and create my my arc that we're going to cut or sand. All right, next you need to make any adjustments that you determine from your test fit. So with every project you have, you always need to be looking at uh, not just the step you're doing, but future steps as well, and the tools you have at your disposal. So in my case, if I were to glue my two long pieces of my table together to form a really big one um, or a big counter, it would actually be too big for me to put on the table saw, saw and, and use the sled. And the sled allows me to do a very, very clean, perpendicular, long cut through everything. So I chose to actually cut while I had the, I guess, thinner pieces, and then I glued the thinner pieces together to make a, uh, to make my two sections of my counter. The last step before, you know, maybe attaching it and also, you know, putting whatever sealant you want on it is going through a process of sanding to get it really smooth. And you start with uh, a, a kind of a heavier grit sandpaper and then you go to a finer grit uh, and just keep doing that until you get everything out and then once it feels incredibly smooth 
you actually get water, a rag, and wipe it down. This gets the dust off it, but it also brings out the grain and you sand it again with the fine sandpaper. And if you do this, there's a reasonable chance that when you actually put your oil on it, it, it the grain won't rise. But if it does, it's not a big deal. You just go ahead and sand it one more time and, uh, and then you are good to go. I did want to mention that I found this really great uh, stuff to use. Uh, it's a combination of mineral oil and beeswax, and it gives just this beautiful color to the wood. I think it, it turned out really nice. This is just really a quick 30 second bonus footage of my sink area and you know went through the same process. It was just smaller. Uh, it worked really well. One of the things I would highly recommend is do templates. So in this case, I wanted to make sure I figured out how to cut the uh, cutting block piece of my uh, sink area out before I actually did the cut. So I didn't make any mistakes since I only had one chance.